Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over lash basics, some of the stuff um, that you just need to know as a beginner lash tech, um, and things that I've learned uh, on my journey being a lash tech. So some of the things that we're going to go over are products that you need, tape, how to tape a client, how to isolate, how to make fans, and how to place fans. So we're going to be going over the products first, tape, glue rings, these are my favorite, um, micro swabs, these are lip brushes, a mascara wand known as spoolies, and these are all basic products that you need for clients, hydrogel pads, I love these, the green life ones, you can get them on Amazon, and your lash tray, this is 0.3 and 0.5 D curl mega, we have our lash adhesive. This is the Paris Lash Academy adhesive, and these are my favorite tweezers. These are the Baby Cub and Beezy from Envy Lashes. Oh, and the bonder that we missed was the VI's Lash Bonder. They only have one bonder on their page. It's that. These are 90 degree tweezers and isolation tweezers. Do you see how thin they are? I love tweezers like that. So we're gonna start by taping our client. We're gonna use my boyfriend here. We wanna make sure we get super, super close to the lash line, but not touching it, because it can cause irritation to the client, and it can cause a chemical burn, or a um, uh, irritate the eye and bruise the eye. So we gotta make sure we're very careful not being too close. We're taping the other eye, again, being super close. Try to get as much as the lashes as you can with the gel pad. You want to make sure your gel pads aren't dry enough. They're not dry so they can stick. Then we're going to go in with some tape. We want to make sure we cover our, the, all the lashes to make sure we have no stickies at the end and none are stuck to the bottom of the client's lashes. This can be very uncomfortable if it is stuck because then you have to go back and remove them and it can be painful. At the end of taping, you want to make sure that the inner corner is not too in the eye. And the outer corner, you bring it down just a little bit like I did, as you've seen in the video. This is important because the outer corner usually uh, rises when the client, if the client talks or moves or as you're isolating, um, a lot of that can happen and we want to make sure that the client is as comfortable as possible. Next, you see me mapping the eye out. I like to separate it into five or four different um, sections. This is this would be a cat eye set going from ten to fifteen. Um, and you and some people like to um, drag it down at the end from like fifteen to longest and taper it down to like 13 or 14. I really like doing that, but I just mapped it so you guys can see what I would do. <clears throat> but there I am checking to see if I have any stickies, um, any stickies, any hairs sticking out of the lashes, out of the eye. Next, we are going over how to make a fan how to peel it off of the strip. And you, as you can see, you gotta make sure you, it comes off clean, the strip. And here I'm going over how to pinch. You don't really wanna pinch, you wanna hold. So not like that, not super tight. You just wanna slightly hold the lashes. And slightly, these are all micro movements. You wanna slowly release pressure from the tweezer. Again, clean off the strip, just like that. Clean to give you a proper fan. Again, hold, don't pinch, and slightly release pressure. Do you see that base? Amazing. Sometimes if you don't like the base, you can go back and fix it and it comes out even better. Again, here we can see the cleanless, sleek, 
base of the lashes when they come off the strip. I want to make sure that's there. So we can come so it can come out being a clean, pretty fan. We want to make sure we have super thin bases for clients to have clean, precision work. This will help with placement and it will help with retention. So here I'm going to show you how I place a lash. My, my, this is my boyfriend. I'm going to use him as a model. We can see he has short lashes straight across and they're all different sizes. So he, so this would be, for some people, more difficult to isolate, or it would just take more time. And I use both of my tweezers. I Do you see how I face the pickup tweezer down? I, I like to do that because it helps me really get in the lashes. And it helps me find a lash. Some people have different lashes and it's easier for ju to use just the isolation tweezer without having to use your finger or the pickup tweezer. And that's okay, but for some people that doesn't work. Here I'm picking up the fan. I like isolating making a fan, coming back, isolating, and using my finger when I have the fan in my pickup tweezer. You can move the lash around to try to have it face the way you want it to. This was a really um, long length, but it was just for demonstration purposes. I also like to use tape. Tape is your best friend when isolating. It can really help you isolate and get into those hard to reach areas. So let's imagine that all that that I taped away is all lashed. Let's say that I'm just trying to get into the inner corner. It's easy for me to tape away that and then just focus on the inner and most inner corner. And as you can see, it's so much more easy to try and isolate rather than having to hold all that and isolate. So do you see how I'm holding, using my finger as a tweezer too while I hold the fan? That's what I like to do when I have the fan and I have to re-isolate. And you can come onto the lash with different sides, whichever is easiest and helps you apply the lash cleanly. It could be from the top, from the side, from the opposite side, and from under. For curly lashes, it's easier to go under. And another pro tip to get into the inner corners when they're super in there and it's getting hard to isolate, just pull, do you see that? Just use some tape, pull the lash back, pull the eyelid back, and it makes it a lot easier to get into the inner corners. At the end of the set, you always want to prime. Sorry, set. You want to set and bond the lashes. This will help remove any of the remaining fumes that are left lingering that can irritate the client's eye um, and cause them to burn and water and irritate. Um, this helps them be able to get their lashes wet sooner and avoid retention issues. At the end of the set, you always want to make sure you look under to try and make sure that there's no stickies and none, no lashes, lash extensions taped to the bottom of the client's lashes or the tape. When removing the tape, you want to make sure that you can, some people like to remove the whole thing, but I like removing the tape first and then the gel pad especially for clients who have super long lower lashes because if you just go on and rip it it can be uncomfortable for some clients and can cause pain so i just like to make it even though it might take a couple seconds longer i like to do that it's more comfortable for them 
So for this part of the video, <laughs> this is just an extra clip on how I make fans. So you can see close up and this would be a volume fan or a mega fan. Again, hold and don't pinch. The previous fans that I showed you were light volume or hybrids. See how I slowly release pressure? This is a fiber tip tweezer, both of them are. And I think fiber tip tweezers are amazing for beginners. I'm a beginner myself. But look at that base. That's the base that we want for all fans. It helps with clean work, placement, and retention. And it's just clean and pretty to look at. And it gives you clean work at the end. Pretty work. We want to practice and practice and practice to try and get those fans looking like that. And after a while, even if you sit down and practice for like an hour, at the end, you will get faster. You will notice the difference between the fans in the beginning and the fans at the end. I'm just now reaching the point where my fans look like this consistently. In the beginning, even towards the middle, they weren't looking like this every single time. But see how it gets faster and faster. You can make one fan right after the another. And they're thin bases. Thin bases is what we want to go for. Over time, speed increases, you get faster, you can get more clients in a day, and charge a lot more, because you're able to produce higher quality services, and in less amount of time. That's all I have for today, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot. Thank you for watching.